discussing parsimony, although I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's like saying that uh, matrimony is marriage, but uh, anyway, whatever. I'm semi-literate. Um, the principle of applying parsimony, I'm going to interchange here, um, assumes that one proposition makes more sense than another. Now, that assumes that there is a an absolute thing out there called sense that applies more to one proposition than to another. Now, the amount of assumptions that are built into that are enormous. Uh, and you end up in an infinite regression if you just question the assumptions that are built into that. For example, the case was, if I can't find my car keys, I look around my house. I don't go looking for them in Tibet. <coughs> well, I agree with that, but that's a gigantic qualifier, because it's not as though I'm actually coming at any sort of truth here. Um, I'm not really saying that my keys are closer in this house than they are in the Himalayas. Or they only could be closer to where I am if I assume that space actually exists and is relevant. Um, space is apparently infinite. Therefore, it's a bit irrational to say that a finite piece of infinity <laughs> is, uh, is something that exists that I can use to measure the distance between myself and my car keys. In the face of infinity, six feet and six hundred thousand feet um, no difference, really, when you think about it. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to ignore that principle when I go looking for my keys. Um, there's a big difference there. The first is when you, like, in other words, when you assume that space is real, and that a finite piece of infinity is, is possible, um, you're talking about something's state of being. You're saying that space exists absolutely in spite of its paradoxical nature. S for something to exist, we have to be able to measure it and see that it's there. Um, but our own rationality says a finite piece of infinity so if I take a finite piece out of something infinite there should be less there than what I took out of it, right? Well there isn't because it's infinity, right? There's no measuring of it. So it's kind of irrational but if I use an irrational assumption I might get a desired outcome but a desired outcome isn't the same thing as a truth. Isn't the same thing as a fact. Um, I want something out of the information that I'm manipulating. I want to find my keys. But I haven't established any fact, and I haven't proven that anything is more factual than anything else. Um, you can argue this forever, uh, because, again, you are going to fall back on trying to measure space, which, you know, you can go around in circles forever trying to do that, trying to even define what space is. <clears throat> There's a big difference between using axioms intelligently and assuming that what has hitherto been axiomatic is real. Uh, I keep harping on that, but it seems that, I don't know, maybe it's necessary to sort of revisit certain things. Um, 
the reason that I'm bringing this up, and I don't want to accuse anyone of anything, but when you just sort of say, okay, we're dealing with axioms here because that's all that we have to deal with. Let's be honest now. You want to find your car keys. Do you want to find the damn things or not? Um, yes, okay, I agree. And in this world, I have to rely on certain things and I have to make certain unsupported assumptions that generally um, get me the desired outcome. But inherent in that is the danger that what is what you accept as provisionally real becomes in some sort of metaphysical sense, in some sort of dialectical sense, I guess, actually real. Because you're led back to the axiom. And we said, look, we've already established this, haven't we? We've established that for the sake of our um, argument here, space exists. Even though we can't really establish that it does exist, that it does exist, rather, um, we're establishing that we want to be able to rely on this tool which we know will give us the desired result. I agree. But again, it's a tricky thing. When does provisionally real become absolutely real in practice and in our use of our reasoning capacities? We're gerrymandering things. We're artificially setting the stage here whenever we use an axiom that ultimately isn't supported. Utility is not the same thing as factuality. Just because something works doesn't mean I have established any facts at all. Thinking with concepts, especially over the period of an entire lifetime, can lead to, I guess you'd call it, rutted thinking, where you're not revisiting your original premises all the time. You don't really have to do that, but it's good to just sort of bear in mind what you're doing all the time, that you want an outcome, that there is a desire in here for something, that the exchange of information doesn't just come from the outside towards me. I am capable of biasing it by my desires. It's a two-way street. And again, my desires will sort of bias things, prejudice things. But if I understand that I'm not trying to find out anything absolutely true, I'm only trying to find my damn car keys, that isn't a problem. But when we decide that one proposition is more true than the other, that's going to require more than just an appeal to utility. Especially when we're dealing with things like value and the value of reality itself. Depressive realism, that sort of thing.